Thank you, everyone. Um, I'm going to read some poems from uh, uh, Pointed Sentences. Um, and this next one is called uh, Need. I knew I needed to visit a beach made entirely of shark's teeth. And on that beach, I knew I would find ivory binoculars left by a vegan birder. And with those binoculars, I knew I could see into the windows of a shoreline luncheonette. And in that luncheonette, I knew I'd find my step-uncle propositioning a leggy waitress. And I thought of my aunt, her failing eyes, a thousand miles away on a dirty beach, looking for signs of onyx-colored birds. And I knew I had to visit that beach, for I too wanted to see those birds, and I had the binoculars necessary. And uh, this next one is called Pain. I hold it in my hands as I might a tomato, roll it across my palms, look for pale imperfections, toss it in the air. Its mute newness amuses me. Without warning, it gathers to a greatness and rescinds the amnesty of breathing. It rockets across the corpse we are not yet, indicting the criminal skin. I become a pachinko parlor, the ozone layer, a desert fire. Everything I understand is in danger. Even the mathematics of eternity is in jeopardy. What's left of salvation is covered in gelatin. There's a buttered emptiness awaiting us. Mm -hmm. um, this one, uh, in a slightly different mood, is called The Deterioration of My Handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> I got a D in handwriting in the third grade. I'm an old man now. That failure continues to haunt me. I saved all the letters from girls who said they loved me. As I look back on them, I can tell the ones I liked by the handwriting alone. When that girl from Princeton Junction drew hearts to dot her eyes, I lost interest immediately. <laughs> I also hated her loopy cursive. Tiny, precise script in real ink on elegant paper gave me deep pleasure. Not scent, sealing wax, color, or watermark. As I became a man, I worked on improving my handwriting. Its sloppiness infuriated me. It was too revelatory. I stopped writing letters on pilfered bank deposit slips. I sprung for better pens. I adjusted my thinking to maximize the purity of my hand. The better my handwriting got, the straighter I stood. I filled a thousand avid notebooks. I took a mistress. My handwriting became my immaculate paramour. But recently, I've noticed I can no longer hold a pen with brash panache. My journals have become slapdash embarrassments. I open them to random ugliness. I don't have the solace of the integrity of the handwritten alphabet. Sterile email, emails and obvious fonts assail me. I don't fall in love anymore. I wish my hands could still carve the cuneiform of beauty on the waxy emptiness of thought. But all that's left me. What is left? The precise boredom of processing processed keys. Black squirrel poem. Without contrition, egregious black squirrels inhabit Upper Michigan and fracture the crystalline trees. Without conscience, disorderly black squirrels inhabit Upper Michigan and scratch the ingenuous sky. Without remorse, Pedantic black squirrels inhabit Upper Michigan and spill the upper boulders in the sun. <laughs> Without shame, incendiary black squirrels inhabit Upper Michigan and append the tenebrous, uh, the, the tenebrous dusk. Without thinking, outre black squirrels inhabit Upper Michigan and petrify the involute world. Without regret, audacious black squirrels inhabit Upper Michigan and unionize the local rodentia. <laughs> um, that poem had an allusion to it, which I know that Tony Barnes still got, but, um, um, and uh, this next poem also has an allusion like that. Of course, we're always rewriting uh, those who came before us, right? This is called Greyhound. I'm riding on a bus sitting next to a woman eating a yellow tomato. We both need a bath. Outside the window is Kansas, then Nebraska. I note that in my ratty journal. Take a banana from a paper bag and pretend to shoot myself. All the reading lights are out. No one can see me. It's the chilling middle of the night. I hallucinate my future, 
I'm a CPA with asthma. I'm a zoologist with MS. I'm a baby who died of SIDS. The bus pulls into a rest stop. I buy a grilled cheese, a vanilla shake, some corn chowder. I covet a pearl button denim shirt. In the men's room, I read the offerings on the vending machines. Two truckers come and go, talking of Tupelo. Stumbling back to my seat, I stare out a dirty window into the sanitary blackness. We're 300 miles from dawn. Um, and this is for Helen, uh, who published uh, this poem in, uh, in her beautiful magazine, Thrush. Uh, it's called My Books. My books wound you. They wound me too. They are those undullable knives they sell on TV. Shards of glass you can pick up only with gloves to which include shards of glass. They are a rain of pins, a bed short-sheeted and stuffed with nettles, a nylon backpack of burrs. All the pinches Prospero inflicted on soft Caliban. All the false promises he made to resilient Ariel. In the middle of the night, I hear them groan. They are torturing each other. They use their spines as swords. What do they want? What does torture ever want? Screaming information. Quick, toss your books. The milk has turned. <laughs> this poem is called The Lost Boys. They live in Colorado and Washington State, Alabama and the Carolinas. They squeak by on sad inheritances and pristine discards. Every day hurts just a little, but not enough. So dreams billow in and smother ideas. Meanwhile, the body does its daily dance alone. It's a neutral life, frighteningly fun. One fills one's lungs with schadenfreude. Two finds the missile hidden in the boot. Tomorrow will be incandescent, but if it isn't, who will remember to regret? Day bleeds into day and eventually clots into a life. Remember what Eminem taught. Let your longing be your GPS.